This movie is about measuring. Error, precision, and accuracy, how do they all go together in one measurement? Um, what we're going to learn in this movie is how to use a scale when you're measuring and how to use it properly. There will always be error built into a measurement that you can't avoid, um, but how to minimize that error and how to make the most of a good measurement. And we'll talk about the terms precision and accuracy while we're at it. So let's start with measuring. For the first thing you need to know, I want you to record all the numbers in a measurement that you are absolutely certain of and then take one estimation. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So here we have a soda can and the soda can is next to a ruler and the ruler starts at zero centimeters and goes up to 10. And so we're gonna try and figure out how tall is this soda can here. Oops, went too far. Um, so how tall do you figure that is? Now, me, let's use some good technique here. Um, this is about halfway, so that's five centimeters. And then halfway again would be 7.5. So this is about eight. So it's somewhere between eight and nine. But right away, I'm guessing here. So I, I don't know any numbers for sure. It's either an eight or a nine. That's an estimation, that's a guess. So all I can report for the height of this soda can is that the measurement is eight or nine. Now intelligent people may disagree here. Okay, some people will say nine, some people will say eight. Who is right? Everyone. It's an estimation. And as long as your estimation is based on some logical reasoning, it's probably good. Now, I'm gonna give you a better ruler this time. And this time the ruler is gonna have tick marks that will enable you to take a better measurement. If you want a better measurement, you have to have better equipment and better techniques. So um, this time, I still want you to make an estimate or a guess, but your guess is going to be better informed. And make sure that you write down all the numbers that you know for sure and one estimation. So this time, we're looking at the height of this can. We're going to ignore the tab there. The height of the can, come over, it's about there. Well. That's higher than, it's definitely eight, eight point something. But is it eight point, well, I would say halfway is about there. So that's 8.5. So it's somewhere like 8.7. Now, look, I'm guessing. I'm giving you verbal clues that say I'm sure that it's eight. I'm sure that it's eight point, and now I'm guessing. That's part of the measurement, and it's an important part of the measurement. Make sure you do that. But make sure you only guess one time. You can't be saying that this is 8.72568 because you don't know those numbers, and they are horrible guesses. You can't, you can't back that up with any facts. But if I guessed 8.7 or 8.8 .8 or 8.6 here, I could make a logical argument as to why I think that's true. So let's try some other ones. I want you to try these, um, and then we'll go through and figure out what the real measurements are. Here's the can one more time with a different ruler. How tall is the can this time? Remember, ignore this tab up here. Pause the video if you need some time to take a look. Now we're going to take a look at liquid in a graduated cylinder. Now, if you'll notice here, liquids in a, in a container usually have a rounded bottom and that rounded bottom is called a meniscus and you always want to read from the bottom of the meniscus so what's this scale read? How much liquid is in there? Pause the video if you need some extra time and then here uh, is a tachometer from a car, it's a Mitsubishi um, how many RPMs are being shown by the tachometer in this car? Pause the video if you need more time. Here are my answers. Are they exactly your answers? Probably not. But what I will say is that our numbers should be different only by a small amount at the very last number. Okay, so maybe you got 8.74 or 8.72. Okay, but I was absolutely sure the 8 and the 7, and I'm guessing at the three there. So our guesses could differ. So let's take a look. Here I'm saying, I know that this can is eight point, well for sure it's eight point five, six, seven. And now I'm saying, ah, I think that's 8.73. The three is my guess. Was your guess different? It certainly could be. And that is all right, that's fine. Here, 
Here's 60, here's 50, so this is 51, 52, so it's between 52 and 53, and I would say that this line right here is at 52.9 milliliters. And then the last one, here's 1, here's 0, that makes this large line 0 0.5, so 0 0.6, it's between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, and I guessed that it was 0 0.69. That was my guess, you might have guessed 0 0.68. And then remember, you have to multiply by 1,000. So 0 0.69 times 1,000 gave me my 690 revolutions per minute. Okay, that's the measurement half of this movie. But what about the precision and the accuracy and the error part? So the question is, why can't you do everything right? What's, what's up with that? Well, you are a human being and you are, f you are prone to error. It's part of being a human. So we're going to divide errors into two things. One of them are going to be called random errors and systematic errors is the second type. And then that will lead us into a discussion of the difference between precision and accuracy. So error is unavoidable. Your job in chemistry is to reduce it, but you can't avoid it. Random errors are the first ones I want to talk about. You can't avoid them. They are part of being a human Part of reading a scale involves taking an estimate, and that estimate, sometimes you're going to guess too high, and sometimes you'll guess too low. The only way to, to, you can't get rid of them, but you can reduce them by using good technique and by using good equipment. Remember, the very first time I asked you to measure the can, I gave you a terrible ruler, and we either said it was 8 or 9. Uh, that's a big spread in a measurement. So in order to try and minimize that spread, the amount, the amount of error that's probably in there, you could use a ruler that has more tick marks that would allow you to be more uh, precise. Another way that you can uh, eliminate random errors, since random errors are truly random, sometimes you guess too high, sometimes you guess too low. Um, if you would have a hundred friends each take a measurement of that can, even with the terrible ruler, you're going to have some people who guess 9, some people who guess 8, some people who guess 7. But if you, were to if you were to take all of their guesses and average them together, I would, get, I would bet that the average would be somewhere around 8.7 because those high numbers and low numbers, numbers will average out. So random errors can be minimized mathematically by taking an average. Systematic errors are the second type. And these are truly your fault or your equipment's fault. Okay, um, some examples about that. So let's say your teacher asks you to, to take the mass of something on a balance. And you forget that the balance actually is already reading one gram when you get there. And you drop some uh, material on there and you say, hey, that it weighs five grams. Well, it doesn't actually because... You, it already said one gram when you got there, so you put four grams on. Uh, you didn't actually put five grams of material on there. The balance said five grams, but it wasn't zeroed out. Um, a lot of people set their watches five minutes fast. If you set your watch five minutes fast and some stranger asks you, hey, what time is it, and you forget, then you'll tell them that it's noon when it's really 11.55. Okay, or say you're a nurse, you're, you're trying to measure the height of patients, and you forget to take, ask them to take their shoes off. So all your patients will be artificially higher, their heights will be larger than they actually are. You can discover systematic errors by actually measuring something that you already know the answer to. So I'm six foot three. Uh, but let's say I want to measure my height, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, wait a minute, I'm six foot four, I'm six foot five, what's going on? Oh, that's right, I can't be wearing platform shoes when I take my height. Okay, um, you can measure things that you know the answer to, and that will give you an idea of whether your method is good or, or your equipment is good and how to fix it. If you discover a systematic error, you can't average it out. Okay, let's say you forget to zero balance, and every time it tells you that the mass is actually three grams higher than it's supposed to be. If you take an average, the average will still be three grams higher than it's supposed to be. So it's not like a random error. In order to correct for a systematic error, you have to be able to figure out and model what's going wrong. So if you knew everybody kept their shoes on, and you knew everybody's shoes were one inch thick, then you could just subtract one inch from everyone's uh, height measurements. 
Okay, so that leads us to precision. If all of your measurements are going to be uh, incorrect in some way, then we need to reduce that. And the one way to do that is to be precise. So one definition of precision is to be able to reproduce the same measurement over and over and over again. Okay, so it's a way of being able to make the same thing happen. And you can make that happen by using good equipment. Um, so in the beginning, I asked you, measure this can with a terrible ruler. And I bet you if I asked you to do that over a series of days, sometimes you'd say it's eight, sometimes you'd say nine, sometimes you'd say seven. Well, that's not reproducing the same number over and over again. If I gave you a better ruler, then if I asked you to come back day in and day out, you might start to guess the same number over and over again. Okay, so measurement can be um, improved with better equipment or by better technique. Now, there's an analogy for precision that involves a target. So here we have our target and here's our bullseye. And we're going to say that precision is all about doing the same thing. So if you were a target shooter and you shot four shots and they were all this close together, that is excellent precision. Now the problem is, if this person were aiming for the center, they didn't do so well. So how can they be precise if they don't hit the center? Precision has nothing to do with being right. It has everything to do with being the same over and over and over again. If you want to be right, you have to talk about accuracy. And accuracy describes how correct you are. And in order to know how correct you are, you need to know the correct answer. You need to know the target. You can be accurate without being precise. But if you're accurate without being precise, you are lucky. Okay, so take a look at this target here. So the target, this person has spread out their values around the center. But say here's the bullseye right in the dead center. They've got one that's too high, one that's too low, one that's too left, and one that's too right. If they were to average out those values, they would actually get an average value that was really good. Okay, so they are accurate, but they're not precise. Their, their values are spread. Another way to look at that is through this graph that I have um, I found on Wikipedia. Let's say the correct answer, here's a whole bunch of values down on the bottom um, from, I don't know, zero to infinity, and the correct answer is right here, whatever value this is. Your accuracy is determined by how far away, see how far we, this value is, the value that you got right here. Okay, that's how accurate you are. Your precision says if you were to, to do this a thousand times, you would never get the same answer twice, or maybe you would, but you would get a spread of values, and the precision tells you how far your values are spread out. Now, could you be um, accurate and have a spread of values? Sure. Um, accuracy determines how close you are to the correct answer. Precision is how spread out your individual answers are. Now, go back to the target here for a second. If I were to erase the red and white marks and just showed you four black shots, could you make a, an analysis of whether the shooter was actually being accurate or not? Well, no, you don't know what they're shooting at. You have no idea whether they shot in the right spot or not. So without knowing a correct answer, it's impossible to say whether someone is accurate. Leave you with a thought. I showed you situations in the end where there was a target shooter, and the shooter in the first case was precise but not very accurate. Remember, all their shots were clustered down in the corner. And I showed you another one in which the shooter was accurate because if you averaged all their values, it was really good. But their individual values collectively were not very precise. So draw yourself a target and show me individual shots that are accurate and precise. What would that target look like? And if you were a shooter and you weren't accurate or precise, what would your target look like? And then think about it for a couple minutes and ask yourself, what kind of errors are there if you're accurate and precise? What kind of errors are present if you're not accurate and you're not precise? Are you more likely to have random errors or are you like more likely to have systematic errors and why? Think through that. Write your comments, maybe even upload a picture in the comment section below. Okay, good luck everyone.